8.7, solving problems with exponential and logarithmic functions. So we're going to talk about earthquakes, we're going to talk about some pH and chemistry and some sound. So the first one we're talking about here is earthquakes. You've probably heard of the Richter scale that measures um, the uh, magnitude or the intensity of an earthquake. And we're going to be using uh, this formula to compare the magnitude and intensities of these earthquakes. So in March of March 11th of 2011, notice these happened in the same year, there was an earthquake in Japan off the coast that caused a huge tsunami and destroyed um, the Fukushima nuclear power plant. You, I'm sure you probably heard of that. It wasn't that long ago. And it measured 9 on the Richter scale. Whereas in August of the same year in Virginia, and I just happened to be there at that time, and a 5.8 earthquake is uh, it's a pretty severe earthquake. It was strong enough that I hid under the table in a restaurant, um, and also it uh, damaged the Washington Monument just outside because this was very close to Washington, D.C. So let's compare the intensities of these two earthquakes. So what I want to do is pick which one do I want to compare, <coughs> which one is more, which one is stronger. So the Japan one is stronger, so I'm going to give that one the I label because I want to know how many times, how many times this one was this one. So we're going to say let I be the earthquake of magnitude 9 and I sub 0 the earthquake of 5.8. So I can say, well, the intensity is going to be and this is really easy calculation because all you have to do is plug in the magnitudes here. So the magnitude of Japan was 9 and the magnitude in Virginia was 5.8. So that's when you need to get out your calculator and we're going to take a look at um, 9 minus 5.8. That's just uh, 4. Point, uh, sorry, 3.2, right? Oh, let's do it. That's by 5.8, 3.2. So 10 to the power of, my answer, is going to give me 1,584. So that means that the earthquake in Japan was 1,584 times stronger than the earthquake in Virginia. Well, that's big, right? 1,584 times stronger. Wow. Um, I'm not going to write out a conclusion. You you heard me say it. You can write it on your own. We'll move on. Okay, so calculate the magnitude of an earthquake that is twice as intense as the San Francisco earthquake of 1989, which measures 6.9. So I want to know what is an earthquake that has, what is the, the, the Richter scale measurement of an earthquake that is, six point, uh, that is twice as strong as a 6.9 earthquake. So We'll just call them both I sub zeros. So I want this one to be twice the strength of the original earthquake, which had a measure of, and we're going to put in 10 here, so M minus 6.9. So I'm trying to solve here for the magnitude of this one. So the I sub zeros disappear. So I want to know how do I solve for M in this equation? And you probably remember that, well, it's an exponential equation. We're trying to solve for the exponent. We take the log. So if I take the log of both sides, I get log base 10 of 10 to the m minus 6.9. Okay, so remember with logs, the exponent can be written in front. That's the power rule. So this is m minus 6.9 times the log base 10 of 10. And what's this equal to? Well, that's just equal to 1. Right? What do I raise 10 to to get 10? You'd say 1. So now all I, all I have to do is solve for m. So m is going to be equal to the log of 2 plus 6.9. So we just plug that into your calculator. So let's say the log of 2 plus 6.9, and I get 7.2, approximately. So that means that 
to go twice as intense, I only have to go up 0 0.3, right? 0 0.3 from 6.9. Okay, so let's take a look at sound now. So sound is interesting because we talk about the dynamic range of sound. Um, there's a huge, our ears are capable of registering sounds that are very, very light. So 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. So that's like 0 0.000000000000, did I see enough? One is the quietest audible sound. And that'd be like the rustle of a leaf or something. And each 10 decibel increase represents a 10 times increase in sound. So if you go up 10 decibels, you go 10 times stronger. So if normal conversation is 60 decibels and a rock concert is 120 decibels, how many times the intensity of conversation is a rock concert? So this is the intensity of the rock concert here is going to be sound, the I0 is going to be our conversation. So I0 is equal to, what would they say, 60 decibels, right? So this is going to be our 60 decibel range. But we're not going to put 60 in here. We're going to put it in up here because this means the one that we're talking about. So this is like um, I0 is rock con, uh, sorry, conversation. I0 is normal conversation. And I shouldn't have put I sub zero here. I should just put it as M. That would make more sense. This isn't my favorite lesson. You might notice. <laughs> the magnitude is 60. The conversation is I sub zero. And I is going to be our rock concert. Okay, so now all we have to do is plug it in. So the rock concert, let's call it RC, is going to be the intensity of normal conversation times 10 to the power of M, M which is our rock concert, so that's 120 minus 60 over 10. So 120 minus 60 is 60 divided by 10 is 6. So 10 to the power of 6, that would be a million. So the intensity of the rock concert is 1 million times that of normal conversation. Wow, right? Eh? And your ears can handle it. Okay, let's move on to chemistry. So we have pH of 7 is a neutral. And every one unit decrease is a tenfold increase in acidity. And if you've taken any chemistry, I'm sure you already know this. One unit increase from 7 is a ten times increase in alkalinity. So if you decrease... So 6 is more acidic than 7, and 8 is more alkaline than 7. So the question says that normal rainwater is slightly acidic at 5.5. What is the pH of something twice as acidic? <clears throat> so I want twice the acidity of the one we're talking about here, which is normal rainwater. And we have 10 to the power of... And we're going to do 5.5 here, which is the uh, pH of rainwater, minus the pH of what we're trying to find. So again, we can just cancel out these A sub zeros. And we're going to jump right ahead in and take the log of both sides. So that's going to give me 5.5 minus pH times the log of 10. Now again, this is 1. Right, this is one, so we don't have to do much about that. So all I have to do now to find the pH is, we'll say the pH is equal to, it should have been a capital H, the pH, we brought that one over here, and that'll be 5.5 minus the log of 2. So log of 2, let's turn that on, 5.5 minus the log of 2, and I get about 5.2. So twice as acidic means it went down by 0.3. What would be the pH of something half as acidic? Well, it's going to be the same formula, only on this side we're going to have a, uh, a half, right? So we still have 
we're still measuring it compared to something else. Only this time we're going to be taking the log of 0.5, which is a half, is 5.5 minus pH times the log of 10. And again, this is 1. Okay, that's 1 as well. So all I have to do to find the pH, so the pH is going to be 5.5 minus the log of 0.5. And that's going to give me, um, or it should be, let's see, 5.5 .5 minus the log of 0.5. It gives me 5.8. Okay, so half as acidic means it's more alkaline, which means the number will be bigger. I know, it's kind of confusing. Probably if you've taken chemistry, this is all like, oh yeah, yeah, this is so easy. I'm not a chemist. <clears throat> Okay, pH. Now we're going to be trying to find the pH of something. So hydrochloric acid has a hydronium ion concentration of 100 moles per liter. What is its pH? So we have this little formula here. pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ions. I bet you've done this at, um, in your class, right, if you took chemistry. So hydrochloric acid, HCl. So we're going to say the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ions. So the negative log of 100. Now, the log of 100, right, the log, remember this is base 10. What's the answer for this? Well, what do I raise 10 to to get 100? And you would say 2, right? So we're going to put that in here, and we get negative. The pH is negative 2. Not so hard, right? Battery acid has a hydronium ion concentration of 5 times 10 to the negative 9 moles per liter. What is its pH? Okay, we take the same formula. pH is equal to the negative log of 5 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, 5 times 10 to the negative 9. So we can evaluate that on your calculator. Just clear that screen. So we'll put the whole thing in. The negative log of 5 times 10 to the power of negative 9 equals, and we get 8.3. So it's a negative of a negative answer. So we get 8.3. That's uh, hydrogen, the battery acid. Hmm, battery acid away from that stuff. A soft drink has a pH of 3. What is the concentration of hydronium ions? So we have the pH on this side, so instead of writing pH, we're going to write 3 is equal to the negative log of H+. Plus. Okay, how are we going to solve that? Well, this is a base 10, so this is like solving one of those little um, equations we did before. So we're kind of stuck, so we change 4, we go to exponential. So 10 to the 3 is equal to the log of h plus. Well, not the log, because we, we got rid of the log. So 10 to the power of 3 is equal to the h plus. 10 to the power of 3 is the negative h plus. So 10 to the 3 is... Hmm. What did we do wrong here? Oh, we should have divided by the negative first, right? Oh, I'm sorry. If you watched it this long, <clears throat> negative 3 is equal to the log base 10 of the hydrogen ions. It's probably good that I make mistakes because then you'll know when you make them too. You go, oh yeah, Miss Havrat did that too. So 10 to the negative 3, there we go. 10 to the negative 3 is equal to the H plus. So H plus is equal to 0 point to negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, .001. And there you go. That's some of these crazy word problems dealing with applications.